Hello friends, welcome to Role Play. Today I'm going to talk about modes of shape change. And those are kind of how we relate within ourselves to the systems in our body, how we feel within and adjust within, and then how we start to bridge to the environment, and then how we fully 3D interact with the environment. So that's a quick intro to what this class is going to be about. It's participatory, get down on your floor, do it in your chair, roll around in your bed, however it works for you. Join us. And if you have not yet liked and subscribed, please do that and consider supporting me on one-time donation on, uh, what is it called? You know what it is. Maybe you do. Uh, or become a donor on Patreon. PayPal, that's the other one. PayPal. I think it's PayPal me, Laura V. Ward. Um, it should be down in the, in the under section of talking about this video. I'm getting back into it. Okay, so we're gonna start, um, I'm gonna start seated. You could be laying down, you could be standing up, you could be any way that feels good to you. And we're gonna start with this idea of shape flow. And shape flow from law bond movement analysis is just how the organism, you, the organism of you, are relating to yourself within yourself. So it's like whew, this sense of breath support. So let's just tune into the breath support for a couple of breaths. Ooh, and maybe letting out some sound on your exhale so that we can ha ah, come deeper into sensation. Ooh, ha, ah, yeah, letting any kind of sounds out. And I have found my hand on my heart, uh, on my chest and my belly. Ha, ah, just feeling into the breath. Feeling into how the breath arrives in the body and how it leaves your body. And maybe exaggerating it a little bit. <sighs> Trying to bring it all the way down into your belly or imagine that it's going all the way down, even past your belly into your feet. <sighs> it's really just your diaphragm descending. But as, we, as the diaphragm descends more, we get more oxygen because the alveoli, the little things in our lungs, the little sort of cilia, are grabbing the oxygen. Then the lower down, there's many more of them there. So we want to... Breathe deep, free up our bellies, free up our pelvises. Ah, so coming in with air, coming into the sense of breath support. As long as we're alive, we're gonna have our breath support. And we can play with lots of different ways of working with breath, pranayama, breath holds, Wim Hof, any of the different things. But for today, let's just let it be however it wants to be. So maybe we're gonna exaggerate our inhales or our exhales or make sound, but we're not trying to control it. We're just giving it freedom. Ah, freedom and exploration, right? The creativity is found by not controlling things, by allowing them to bubble up, to come into process within our bodies. So inviting micro movement into your body, maybe tuning into the sense of fluidity in the body, the sense of flow. So yeah, shape flow is this ongoing continual movement happening inside your body of internal adjustments. And it could even be like, oh, I'm just gonna you know, rub my face. Like this could be even shape flow or just scratch my shoulder or Anything where I'm just relating into myself, I'm not bridging into the world, I'm not relating very much with my environment, I'm just really feeling into being. Ah, and I'm adding some spiral movement through my spine, a lateral movement, maybe some forward back, just to throw some more info out there, which I've already thrown out there once. I've been listening to the Huberman podcast and I learned these new terms. It's for our vestibular system and our system of balance, which is there, these little tiny crystals inside of our ears. So the, the words are this, uh, pitch, which is forward backwards. So in Laban, that would be the sagittal dimension rolling, pitching, pitching is going forward and backward. And then yaw, which is side to side. So in Laban, that would be the horizontal tracking, the horizon, and then roll, which is this. So this is for our inner ear, these pitch yawn roll. I think they're kind of ship. I think they're like boating terminology, but we're using them for our head. This would be the vertical plane as I'm 
shifting in the vertical plane. I've got my up downness and some side sideness. So I'm just throwing those words out there. Now we're going to mix them all up. So we're mixing up the three planes. We can roll, we can do the sagittal wheel plane, we can do the horizontal table plane, we can do the vertical door plane, just finding that within ourselves, not that we have to go out into space, but just within our body, like the shape of my body from my hips to my shoulders is really like a long rectangle that could be like the door plane. And then like the diaphragm rib cage kind of through the horizontal, even though it's on an incline, everything is an approximation when we add space to our bodies. So finding ourselves in that, we're still very much on the inner body, internal shaping internal shaping and flowing, <sighs> growing and shrinking with the breath, maybe feeling into our blood flow and also our lymphatic flow, which is lymph is moving along very close to the venous system, vascular system, and also the nervous system. So we can start to tune into those as well. I think of the nervous system as being, as being sort of electrical and fiery, these, these impulses and messages moving without any kind of, but just moving through our body quickly as we feel what's going on, right? So when I'm tuning into my interoception, I am bringing online that relationship of sensing, feeling, noticing, awareness. Ah, mm, yeah, let's take this down to the floor and let, I, I know that I have a person in my room who's got some back stuff. So let's roll it around on the floor and feel what that shape flow inside your body is like on the floor. So it can be any kind of movement. And with the idea, originally my role play idea was to roll around so that we're hydrating fascia, we're hydrating tissue, we're giving the organs some movement against each other so they're not gumming up and getting stuck together. So just letting yourself massage out from the inside and the floor as well as we're kind of shape flowing around. So we're within ourselves still in the experience of being human. It could be like, if you see a, you know, a youngish baby, like in the first few months, you see the little movements their body are do, is doing. It's that motor babbling. They're learning. Their body is just doing its things to figure it out. We can come into that motor babbling, maybe also like bringing the shape flow into our fingers and toes. So it's just the experience of being, the experience of being in a human body without the adult holding patterns and rigidities. We're inviting in the soft, fluid baby tissue, uh, just in our imaginations and in our, maybe in our experience if we're lucky. Ah. Really feeling into our own body, internal shape flow support, breath support, core support coherence with the organs, coherence with the system. We could even think into our gut body and maybe gurgle a little, make some bubbling sounds. I always, if I think of babies in that deep shape flow, they're usually got a little bit of bubbles of spit coming out, blowing bubbles. So feel free to think into that, right? That's very related to our gut body. Tongue to tail. You can even stick out your tongue feeling into that in the experience of being in this deep shape flow support, feeling into the inner body. We're gonna to start to shift it soon, but let's stay in here for a few more breaths. Experiencing your body as this organic fluid system of aliveness, right? Organic fluid system of aliveness. Breath, blood flow, lymph flow. We got our endocrine system. We got the whole parasympathetic rest and digest, soothe and subtle thing kind of coming online as we're moving around in this. Hopefully, it's not too activated and sympathetic, but maybe sometimes it pops in like something. <gasps> What's that? But let's try and keep it in so that we're still in the shape flow, inner body, internal support, just 
as if you are a sea creature or a piece of seaweed moving in the water. Ah, finding the deliciousness of being inside without rigidity, just sensing into sensation and deliciousness. All right, so we are gonna start to make some bridges into our environment, starting to maybe spoke out or arc out into the space around you, starting to reach out. If you think of like a, those little pignopodia, like uh, they're like the, the, oh God, there's a word for them that I can't think of right now. The sea creatures that have all the little, they're stuck on something like an urchin, but then they have all this fluid movement. But they say, and you know, they, they maybe move a little bit, but they are. And then if you touch them, they kind of pull back in, but they're kind of spoking out into the world, sensing the world through those spokes. So we're letting ourselves kind of reach out, bridging to the world around us. Spoke-like, arc-like movement. So we're not, yeah, just a little testing the, the space around us. Wow. What is out there and taking it in, right? So we're like, oh, like babies also, they reach out. What do they do? They put the thing in their mouth. Oh, got to taste that. What's that like? Reaching out, that grasping and bringing it into myself, reaching, or even when kids are like littler, they, that's mine. Grab it, pull it back. I want that. So we're, you know, making our way out into the world with these spokes. And then these arcs. So the spokes are like coming from the center to the edge and the arcs might be cutting through space. We might be working around the periphery, making these arcs, rainbow movement with our hands or arms or legs, spoke-like and arc-like. In movement analysis, we call this directional movement. We're starting to bridge to the environment. We're coming out of just being in our shape flow and we're making relationships with what's around us reaching out. Connecting in, trying things on. And this can be happening from any kind of level. Ha, huh. reaching, experiencing the space around in these sort of kind of linear, arky, spoky ways. I mean, I'm not being very linear. I'm all over the place. But when I reach out, sort of linear for a human body, center to edge, or peripheral movement, stretching around the periphery, reaching out to the edges. One way to kind of des describe our kinesphere, our realm of movement here on the floor, is to reach out. Where does my body movement possibility end. So as I'm like moving my arms and legs around and finding the edges of my kinosphere, my realm of possible movement. And as I'm doing that, I'm getting a nice massage through my body on the floor. So spoke-like, arc-like movement, finding our way in this kinosphere, radiating out into the world and maybe coming back into ourselves. So that we started in the shape flow within our body and then we moved into sort of directional shape, making these bridges connecting to the space around us. Now we're gonna to go to full flow shaping. So this is much more three-dimensional participation with the world around us. So the bridge has been made. Now we're, we've got it. We can shape. I've got a little assistant here. who's probably gonna attack me in the middle of this, but I'm shaping around this little body, shaping around this little body. So hugging would be very shaping, very three-dimensional when we add spirals and gauge as if we're kind of moving through an environment that contains something. Could be like molasses, contains molasses or making my way through some plants. I could see like the corn fields, children of the corn, but moving the stuff out of your way. So you're engaging really fully and three-dimensionally. And of course, right now, the only thing I'm really engaging with is the floor and the air. 
but I like to imagine that the space around me is alive. And I feel like in many ways it is, it's alive with spirit, it's alive with energy, it's alive with all the different devices like radio waves <laughs> and cell phone towers. There's so much stuff going on in the air. Ha, ah, what else is in there? How is the organism of air engaging and how am I engaging with it, right? We come back to that breath support. <sighs> Can I shape with this element of air? Can I dance with the air? Really three-dimensional full body participation. It could be very much still on the floor. You don't have to get up. You could, or you could be in a chair, but really engaging so that it's not sort of like linear movement, but it's wrapping and curling and engaging, carving. Ah, multiple joints, doing multiple different things. Really diverse. What happens when we play with these different ways of being in our body? Well, for me, it certainly opens up my mind. <laughs> Gives me more possibility for how I engage with the world. Ha! <sighs> yeah, finding ways of being that feel interesting. Breaking all the rules of how you've been told you're supposed to be in your body. And listening in. So... Sometimes when people haven't done a lot of movement and they start to do it, they can really throw themselves around and maybe get hurt. Do that if you feel comfortable with it. But just remember that you have to take care of this animal body. And yeah, so whatever you're rolling around is like, or you're engaging with your environment, keep it in a, in a realm or a range that isn't going to injure you. For me, this movement keeps me uh, hydrated and engaged. So yeah, I, I very rarely get hurt doing this type of work. This is usually really recuperative for me. It's usually when I'm doing something much more intense then I'm more likely to get an injury. But when we spend a lot of time in our bodies and we move a lot, there's a lot of opportunity to get injured. So I feel like this for me is a lot of recovery movement, recuperative, recuperative movement. So in the Laban work, there's this idea of exertion and recuperation. And it could be that, ah, oh, I've spent so much time in my, in my shape flow that I need to recuperate by going out into the world. I need to make those bridges or really engage fully with what's around me. So this is one big element right now. We're actually getting a big Laban lesson in shape shape that the category of shape in lab on there's body which is like the anatomy what part is moving it's my finger it's my si joint getting rolled across or it's the lymphatic fluid all that would be the body level stuff or my elbow and knee are touching and then there's shape and this is how am i engaging with my environment Am I just in myself in the shape flow or am I bridging out or am I fully three-dimensionally engaging with my environment, right? Sometimes people who have a hard time connecting to other people don't have access to this more three-dimensional full-on shaping. What if we offered it through the body level? Sometimes it's safe to go in through the body level. So what I was saying is, yeah, or if we've been out there in the world so much and ah, maybe we need to come in find our internal shape flow. So now that we've discussed what all the stuff is, or I've monologued it, feel free to just shift around between those things and see if you can notice like, oh, ah, I did a directional moment, movement where I'm arcing through the space or I'm spoking through the space, or I did a really full body engaged three-dimensional movement shaping. And then underlying that, there's this nice, lovely shape flow. Ah, the support of my own body, my own body supporting me being human in the world. So I'm going to add music for our last little section. 
And it will again be Jeff Gersh Ambient Field. Thank you so much, Jeff, for this. You can find him on Bandcamp. Amazing, amazing work. Let's go with this one, Ambient Fields. Just gonna turn it down as it gets louder. It let me know if it gets too loud. Yeah, let yourself experiment, experience, play with what feels good and interesting. When we talk about shape, we call this modes of shape change. And it's how, yeah, how we're engaging in the world or within our own body. found really interesting recently or just thinking about is how people um, turn to different substances to feel different in their bodies like take a drug we, <laughs> take a drug so that you can calm down or so you can wake up or so you can sleep or so you can have no pain but what if we were really taught to participate in our body in different ways to find those things hmm, no I need to ah, have more energy can I pull myself up through movement or how ah, can I slow down and ground myself through movement? Yeah. Can I micro -do dose with movement? Ah, clearing up the patterning that isn't serving me or at least inviting some spaciousness in there.
fade out the music and just give us a minute or two more just to be in the silence of our own experience. Either to rest in that or to move, whatever it is, just give yourself a chance to process all the processing, ah, to let it settle. And maybe there's still movement or maybe not. Whatever feels good to you. Like, yeah, so I'm coming back into this shape flow. Unclenching the fist of being, ah, moving into the lightness, or the fluidity. Hmm. Inviting in the good stuff, the juicy stuff, and allowing the other stuff to di to to digest and to feed you in a weird way to compost. going to let this come to an end for the people in TV land.